Tis the season for decking the halls. We are firmly in December, firmly in the holiday season. And everywhere you look, people are dressed in holiday style to rock around that Christmas tree. Today, I am going to show you three incredible appetizers that people will think you have spent days slaving over, but in true Wine Sisters fashion, they come together in a snap. Hello friends, I'm Erin, the founder and chief sommelier here at the Wine Sisters. Welcome to our YouTube channel. This is the place where every week we show you how to eat, drink, and entertain like a pro. And tis the season of entertaining, n'est-ce pas? That's right, December is fully here and I know that you have a fully, fully stocked dance card. Whether you're coming or going or hosting or guesting, it's all about the party season this year year. So just a couple of days ago, I held my first Christmas party. It was my annual tree trimming bash, a little cocktail party where everyone helped me decorate for the season. And I want to show you exactly what I served because people loved it, but it's also a really busy time for me. Obviously this is the high water season and at the Wine Sisters, we are busy hosting everyone's holiday wine tasting. So I don't ever really have a lot of time. I've got to maximize the time that I've got. So I made these awesome appetizers. People love them. They requested the recipes and now I'm going to share them with you. Now, what have I got? I have got a gorgeous poached shrimp with an easy lemon aioli. This is going to be fantastic, not only for the keto, paleo, no carb people that you know, but also the pescatarians in your life. We're also going to go through a really fabulous tomato parmesan puff pastry. It's cute, it's elegant, it's tasty, and it's really great for vegetarians. Unfortunately, vegans not so much because there's butter in the puff pastry, and of course the parmesan is an animal product as well. However, if you found a pre-made uh, puff pastry that was made with shortening and then changed over to the vegan Parmesan, you could turn that into a vegan option really easily. And lastly, I'm also going to show you an absolutely wickedly delicious whipped ricotta on crostini. And the thing about this is it's so easy. It only takes a blender, but everyone thinks that you pulled something magical out of your kitchen. It's really quite great. So I'm going to show you how we do that as well. Now, there's just one thing I need to do. Ah, it's the holidays. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh, here we go. Whew. I'm a pro. The holidays are always a little bit more festive with fizz, don't you think? Santé, let's get cooking. So the first thing I'm gonna show you is a super easy lemon aioli. Now, that just basically means a flavored mayonnaise, but instead of making our own mayonnaise, whisking together egg yolks and oil, I'm gonna do the cheaters version and go right for a good quality mayonnaise that's already been made and it saves me a super fast step. So I'm going to take probably about a good couple of tablespoons full. So I've got a good couple of tablespoons of mayonnaise. I'm going to put in a sprinkle of salt a couple of cracks of black pepper. And here's the trick is that a lot of the time when you're making proper lemon aioli, you're going to put in the lemon juice, but you're also going to grate in garlic. I find that leaving raw garlic in the actual dip is a little bit harsh, especially when you're at parties and you're gonna be talking to a lot of people. I mean, if you know, you know, right? So what I've done is I actually use the lemon juice. I squeeze that out first and I let some cut garlic cloves sit in it for 15 or 20 minutes just to infuse the flavor of garlic into the lemon. So you still get that nice flavor, but you don't get that really potent kick on your breath of raw garlic. It's a little bit more subtle. So I'm just going to pour in just a little bit, maybe about mm, a teaspoon or so. Into that it goes, put that off to the side. And you can smell the garlic, so the aromatics are doing quite well. I really like a little bit of Dijon, so just about a teaspoon or so, that's gonna give it a nice little kick. And here's something unusual that not everybody does, but I like horseradish. I love horseradish. And especially because I plan on serving this with some poached shrimp, uh, I think it just gives it a nice little kick. Now you might have, while you're out, you might have seen truffle aioli or other flavored aiolis, aiolis that use, you know, put in a little bit of tarragon or a little bit of basil. The basis is mayonnaise, lemon, and garlic, but you can then flavor it further to however you see fit. So I'm just gonna mix this all together really nice. And this works really well for French fries. Uh, I've served this with truffle chips. It's so delicious. You can use it for a lovely crudité platter. 
And you can even use it for your main courses. If you were going to be serving, um, you know, crab, lobster, you can even spread it on burgers and sandwiches. It's a really versatile dip and everyone loves it. And I served it, like I said, last weekend at my party and people were asking for the recipe and look how fast it came together. So I'm just going to finish that off with a little bit of lemon zest. That should do it. Stir it all around. Okay, so this is all nicely mixed together. It is, it's delicious. It is lemon, it is garlic. You've got that beautiful tang from a good quality mayonnaise. You've got that nice sort of bite from the lemon juice. Little, a little tiny wink, just a little, a little tease of heat from that horseradish. That's really very, very good. Okay, so I'm going to plate this up as part of my appetizers. Now into this smaller bowl, I'm gonna put in my aioli. And earlier I poached these shrimp. Poaching the shrimp couldn't be easier. What I like to do is I put together a big pot of water with half a bottle of white wine. I put in some lemon, I put in some aromatics like onion, celery, and carrots, a few peppercorns and bay leaves and fennel seed. And I allow that to come to a boil and steep until it all really fuses, about 15 or 20 minutes until the water is really nice and flavored. I just put in my shrimp for not even a minute, just until they turn pink. And then I plunge them into an ice bath to stop the cooking and keep them really nice and juicy and plump, not rubbery. So I've got these really great shrimp and you can be fussy about it if you want. I sort of like the mishmash of how everything, just putting them on the plate and sort of letting them all go like this. I think that's a really nice way to do it. Gather them all up, make it look nice and full. And of course you can adjust this to however many people you have. So whether you're serving 50 or five people, you can just adjust the measurements really easily. And this goes beautifully. The poached shrimp with a little lemon aioli and a glass of sparkling wine. It is a Merry Christmas after all. Okay, I'm gonna put this off to the side. We're gonna do now appetizer two. Okay, so now that we've got our shrimp resting, I'm gonna show you the next one. And this is the beautiful whipped ricotta. I absolutely love this. People think it's so fancy, but honestly, if you've got a nice blender, high speed is preferable, but you don't even have to do that. And you wanna have some good quality ricotta, this is all you have to do. Into one blender, you put in a tub of this ricotta. My blender is actually the other way and because of camera and situations like that, I can't really show you, but I'm gonna show you what we do and then I'm gonna come back and show you the finished product, but you've all seen how a blender works. So I think we're okay there. I hope. So you add in a full tub of ricotta, I a little bit of olive oil. Now I love making garlic confit and using the oil from that. You actually can see the short video that we did right here uh, on how to make garlic confit, but I use it for everything. So I put in the ricotta, about a tablespoon of the oil, and just about another tablespoon of the cream. You wanna do it very gradually because what you don't want, it does take a minute for the blender to get going, and what you don't want is keep adding liquid and then all of a sudden it's soupy. You still want it to be nice and thick. A little bit of uh, salt and some pepper. I'm gonna go blend this up and I will be right back and I will show you what it looks like. We're gonna put it on some crostini and it's gonna be fantastic. Okay, so earlier I just toasted up some crostini. All I did was slice up some baguette, drizzle it with a little bit of olive oil. In my case, I use that garlic confit oil because I think, you know, there's nothing that garlic confit oil can't do. This is it. This is what the ricotta looks like. Isn't that beautiful? It just is this beautiful, almost thick creme fraiche kind of consistency. And it's just, it's really, it's got, it's delicate and sweet and a little bit salty from that pinch of salt that we put in. But what we're also going to do is we're going to drizzle it with a little bit of truffle honey and this will really take it over the top. So watch what I'm gonna do. So I'm just gonna put on a nice thick spread of our ricotta, our whipped ricotta. It gives it such a beautiful consistency. Topping that beautiful fragrant garlic oil. And then this truffle honey is incredible. It's sweet, but got that earthy bite from the truffle. And all I'm going to do is stick my knife in it. If you had one of those honey dippers, you could use that, but I don't. So we're just gonna do a little drizzle, just like that. And a little drizzle there. It's okay if you get some on the board, it makes it look rustic, as the chefs might say. I've worked with so many chefs, I'm a firm believer that when they say rustic, it's like, well, it just, I made a mistake. So we're just gonna call it rustic. Let's put on a little, of those truffles themselves, shall we? Just to make it look really ooh and aw. What you could do as well is you could use uh, a little bit of truffle oil. You could put some hot Calabrian peppers on there. 
You could top it with some fresh herbs, some pickled onions, some capers. Really, it's just as limited to your imagination as you want. And so we've got these really nice crostinis, these really nice uh, whipped ricotta toasts, and that's gonna be great for your party as well. Now, let's go on to our final pinwheel. You guys are gonna love this. It's so easy, so fun. Let's get to it. Okay, so we've got our whipped ricotta toast with truffle honey done and ready to go. We've got our poached shrimp with lemon aioli done and ready to go. And the final one is this really attractive pinwheel. I think it's a really cute, but really elegant appetizer. As I said, I'm gonna show you how to stuff it and fill it with uh, a very simple tomato and Parmesan. I think that goes for a lot of taste, so it's a really good crowd pleaser. However, I've also done these with many other fillings, including pesto and prosciutto. That was super delicious and very rich. Uh, I also did a kind of a take on the classic French ham and cheese sandwich, the jambon and Swiss cheese. And so I did that as well, and that was quite good as well. So consider using those. Again, I've got all these recipes linked in our show notes below. So go and take a look if you'd like to uh, get the written recipe. But here I have the um, oven's ready. I have my oven preheating to 350 degrees and I have a nice pre-made store-bought butter puff pastry. If you want to make your own puff pastry, go crazy. But as I said, these days are kind of hectic for me. I'm sure they are for you. So I don't mind doing a shortcut or two. So first things first, I'm going to give this a really good flouring so it doesn't stick. Flour up that board really nicely. You're probably gonna need more flour than you think, so don't even worry. And now I'm going to roll it out. Let me take a sip of my bubbly. Okay, so you just wanna roll this out so that it's about a book shape. You don't want it so thin that you can see through it, but you don't want it overly thick either. So somewhere in the Goldilocks middle. Not too thick, not too thin. Now, for whatever reason, I can never get a perfect square. My sides are always wobbly, so I always have to chop those off, but no haters. Okay, so I have my puff pastry rolled out into a, a rectangle, or what looks like a rectangle as far as I can roll, a wobbly rectangle. What do you want? I drink for a living. Earlier, I whipped up a little bit of um, really easily basil, basil tomato sauce. If you don't have time, Store-bought's just fine. So all we're going to do is spread it now really easily and evenly across this puff pastry. And like I said, you could also do this with pesto. It's really delicious. You can spread a little bit of Dijon on this and then whip up a Dijon ham Swiss roll. Those are very good. And in fact, you could do all three. That would be a really nice option too. Okay, so we've got that all spread out nicely. And now what I'm going to do, make it rain Parmesan. Everybody loves Parmesan. So I'm just gonna give this a nice sprinkling. Now to this, if you wanted to, you could add in uh, some diced up anchovy. You could add, uh, add in a few black olives. You could put in some caramelized onions. You know, whatever you think you're craving, you just don't wanna overstuff it. This is not a stuffed crust pizza. This is just a light little nibble. And too much and too many wet ingredients could make this fall apart, so you don't want to do that. I just find this is a nice little way to make it puff up nice and crisp. So see that? Look how beautiful that looks. So now what we're going to do, I'm just going to put a couple cranks of black pepper. If you wanted to put in some red hot chili pepper flakes, uh, anything like that. You could put in a couple more leaves of basil if you felt like it. I've got basil in my sauce, so I don't need to. So just a very simple pinwheel. And all we're going to do now is we're just going to roll it up. Just like that, it couldn't be any simpler. Now, if you find that your puff pastry is starting to get too soft, you can always throw it in the fridge for a minute or two just to let it firm back up. Now, I've got these wobbly little edges. I'm just going to chop those off. I'm not going to get rid of them. I'll bake them off, but they can be uh, the chef's treat. They may not be, they're not pretty enough for company, but pretty enough for me. And all we're going to do now is just chop them into, I don't know, maybe two finger widths. And again, you can make as many of these as you like. So if you're having a party of 50, just keep on going. And if you're only having a couple people over, one is pretty sufficient along with everything else that you're serving. So onto my baking sheet with some nice parchment paper. I'm gonna put them on the side. You might have to reposition them a little bit. They may have flattened out. So just put them back into a circular shape. That's fine. Stand them up like that. And now, just to make them get nice and golden, 
we're gonna give them a little bit of an egg wash. And sometimes if you don't have a pastry brush, what I find just as easy is just taking them and doing just a very, just kissing the sides and using your fingers. If your hands are clean, they're probably the best kitchen tools you have. Okay, so these are ready to go into the oven. I've got it preheated at 30, 350 degrees. It'll probably take 20 to 30 minutes. I'll keep an eye on it. And then I'll be right back and show you how we're gonna serve it all. All right, so these have just come out of the oven and they are burning hot, but look how cute these are. Aren't these just adorable? These cute little pinwheels, whoo, they're hot. I'm gonna put them on this cute little cake stand. You, of course, can plate them however you'd like. I think they're super cute. I think your guests are gonna love them. I know your guests are gonna love them, mine do. Ooh, they're very hot, ooh, ouch. Mm. For our art, we must suffer. Art is pain, isn't it? But look what we've got here. We've got a beautiful little cake stand full of our Pinwheels, these are the tomato parmesan pinwheels, and you can also make them with ham, Dijon, and Swiss. We've got our whipped ricotta with truffle honey, and of course, our super easy aioli with our poached shrimp. I think, no, I know that these are going to make a brilliant addition to any of your holiday buffets. Pair this alongside some cheese boards, some charcuterie, your crudite, and these are going to go like that. At least they do at my house, so I hope that you really enjoy them. And speaking of enjoying, if you liked this video, please give us a like, and if you have any questions about recipes for entertaining and what wines might be good for the season, please leave them below, and I promise I'll respond as soon as I'm able. And if you think you have a friend who could be the host with the most and maybe enjoy this, please share it. We always wanna get the good word out of how to eat, drink and entertain like a pro to everyone that we can. So also with that in mind, do hit subscribe and maybe even hit that bell so you can be alerted to when we drop a new video every single week. And until next week, wine lovers, stay well, drink better, happy holidays. I'm gonna bite this. I like that. Yeah, I'm just gonna sit here and eat.